right, guys. I want to go over a little shout out real fast to Mike Clay on X for going ahead and posting this. And again, I don't have my face cam on the screen right now for obvious reasons because if I show my face right now, I'll block half the names. So I'm not going to be showing my face for the first part of this video because I don't want to block half the names. But uh, going right into this, you know, Lou Anarumo is now tied for the longest uh, tender defensive coordinator in the NFL. And it just goes to show how much this the NFL is a, you know, what have you done for me recently league. It's a, a league that changes every single year. And no team wants to be left behind thinking that they're not currently, you know, up up to par with um, brand new, like the best of the best. That's what I'm trying to say. And you can see there are still teams that do not have any type of... Oh, the Chargers don't have an OC. They don't have a DC. Uh, there's still a lot of positions left, a lot of jobs available. The Saints don't have a DC, or OC or a DC. Um, the Seahawks don't have an OC or a DC. And the Commanders don't have an OC or a DC. So there's a lot of spots still available. A lot of chances for personnel from maybe our team or other teams to leave and go somewhere else. I don't think... Personally, we will lose anybody, but it's always a possibility. Now, Mike Clay on X here went ahead and highlighted the red play uh, personnels or well, people are going to be the brand new additions to the set team. So you see how many people are brand new. I mean, you have Brian Callahan, obviously Tennessee, brand new. Dan Quinn, Mike McDonald. Um, yeah, Mike McDonald. McDonald. I. Right. You have Gerard Mayo, Jim Harbaugh, Dave canals and you have raheem morris and then for ocs you have a crap ton of new ones and then you just get to our squad and it's kind of funny because you know we had marvin lewis for 15 years right we don't like to fire coaches we try our best never to fire coaches we don't like to fire personnel usually if we lose a personnel person it's because they're going to get promoted somewhere else on another team and it's never, ever us firing or letting them go. It's literally them just leaving us to go somewhere else. Um, for, so, for example, Zach Taylor, he's been on our team since 2019. You go back to other coaches in the NFL and, you know, start from the bottom here, right? Go up. 2017, Kyle Shanahan. Um, 2007, Mike Tomlin. Ironically enough, AFC North. Because AFC North, I mean, you have, again, Mike Tomlin, 2007, 2008, John Harbaugh. And then you have us. And then, of course, Kevin Stefanski is going to go ahead and be, where is Stefanski? Um, I may just look at Cleveland. There we go. 2020. So, like, AFC North, for the most part, we don't get rid of our coaches. It's not just us. It's pretty much everyone in the AFC North. And I know with the Steelers, for example, when they got rid of the OC last year, they kind of had to. But when they got rid of him, that was the first time I think they fired a coach midseason since like 1960. Like, they, they just don't do it. And it just because I feel like in the most part here, and it's not me taking a shot at any other fan, fan base or NFL franchise, we do our best job possible at making sure the people we select, the, um, personnel we select are the best of the best and go along with all culture right because in Cincinnati with the Bengals here we we are kind of very similar to the Patriot way where the Patriots create their own culture and they adapt everyone in the difference is we go more based on family oriented and family values more than going off of Patriot Way, which is just like a dictatorship, right? We go based more based on family way of like, you know, this is a big family. We're all together. We're all fighting for one. That's why a lot of Cincinnati Bengals players, even when they leave us, they love us, right? Because it's like, hey, that was a beautiful family to be a part of. Chris Collinsworth, I don't even know anymore. He hates us for no reason. And he was a great wide receiver for us. I digress. So that's why, for example, Zach Taylor, 2019 here. We had Marv for 15 years and so on and so on. And you go down this list here, I mean, again, like I said, I listed off the AFC North teams. But outside of the AFC North team, 2017, Sean McDormand. Um, go down the list, Matt LaFour is 2019. You have 2013, Andy Reid. And it's funny how you go through and you look at the coaches, right? I think Tom Brady said this best. He said, 
the one thing that the Patriots had for so long and what helped them become successful was the fact that every other team was getting rid of their coaches and moving on from this coach, that coach, this coach, and the Patriots never did. And it's what kept him successful because he was able to always have the consistency of knowing, okay, this is our coaching staff. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to be successful. Now, obviously, nowadays, you kind of always can't control that. Sometimes coaches go somewhere else to get a better job or opportunity. But especially the head coaching position, it's usually because the head coaches end up being fired or they step down. Going through here, you know, the most successful teams, right? They usually do not do that. So Andy Reid, one of the best teams in the AFC, obviously for the longest time since 2000 and what was it? 2013? Jeez, yeah, 2013, they had Andy Reid, one of the successful teams. Um, the Rams are successful. They won a Super Bowl. Um, 2017. Ravens, they're a very successful organization. 2008. Their quarterback. Steelers, very successful. 2007, Mike Tomlin. You know, if you have a coach for a long time, it doesn't always mean that you're successful. But what it means is, usually you pick the correct personnel that you're not just flipping through another guy, another guy, another guy every single other season. Especially a head coaching position. OCDC, I wouldn't talk crap about that because, again, those guys get promoted all the time. And it happens. But head coaching position, usually... You don't move unless, you know, the owner, GM, or higher up say, all right, it's time, we're done. So, again, there's a lot of new, brand new guys and a lot of 20, you know, 23s, 2022, 2021, 2020s, et cetera. So, now looking at OCs, right? Uh, for us, obviously, we have a brand new OC in Dan Pitcher. Brian Callahan left us, went to Tennessee, which, again, like I said, exactly my point here. You know, people leave. Go to a new job, get promoted, etc. Happens with OCs, happen with the Ravens of DC. The Ravens DC is the exact same situation. Uh, Mike McDonald, he went from you know their DC over to Seattle to be their starting um, head coach. Oh, well, not starting head coach, to be their head coach. Um, and then going here, we have offensive play caller, which is obviously. <laughs> Zach Taylor since 2019. You know what's funny? Look. You see how the name here, mostly in the NFL, reflects the same name here? It's like copy and paste, right? Mike? Mike. Nathiel. Wait, no. Nathiel Hackett. Nathiel Hackett. Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith. Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. Well, okay, first of all, I do love the fact that he's he's everything, but he is that smart. He is such a good coach. Um, Liam, Liam, right? That's how it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be this name, this name, this name, this name. Brian Calhoun is also the offensive play caller for the Titans, which I do find funny. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's how it's supposed to be. And then it's the Bengals. Zach Taylor, Dan Pitcher, Zach Taylor. <laughs> I love it. But then you got Lou, right? Lou has been 2019. He has been our defense coordinator. Other than Casey's Steve Spangola. Spangolo. 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 I thought it was Spangola. Spangolo. Okay. Anyway, other than him, everyone else is newer. Everyone else is. At least 2020 plus. And actually, sorry, 2021 plus. So it just goes to show, again, not that, you know, again, DC, there's still positions that get promoted, all this other stuff. Um, and, you know, obviously, Lou last year, year literally had a head coaching job opportunity. And they chose, um, okay, not Rich Gannon. They chose Gannon instead of him. The, uh, the Cardinals did. Nonetheless, though, it just goes to show how amazing he is. Because even though, yes, he has gotten coaching opportunities, he, dude, he he gets the job done. And that's the most important thing. Because, again, like I said, other than looking through this list here of other coaches that have been promoted, and again, it happens all the time, it also happens that DCs and OCs get fired. And usually when a defense isn't successful, an offense isn't successful, 
the first thing to go, usually how this works, right? Offense is not successful, right? Let's say, break it down. Offense not successful. First thing they blame, offense coordinator. The last thing they blame usually is the head coach or the quarterback. Because usually the quarterback, especially if the quarterback's younger and, you know, he needs time to develop, it's like, okay, well, the OC is failing the quarterback. OC is the problem. After the OC, then you get to maybe the GM, maybe the head coach, and then usually the quarterback's the last one to blame. It depends, though. I mean, it, it's a very situational shit when, I come, when it comes to the quarterback blame. Sometimes the quarterback's like the second to blame. But usually the OC is the first one to blame. So they usually say, okay, well, get rid of the OC, get someone else in here, see if something can happen, right? Ravens did the same thing with Todd Munkin. They went ahead and got rid of Greg Roman. Okay, you're the problem. Lamar's not successful. Bring in Todd Munkin. And it worked, right? It worked very well. Um, and DC are the, usually the same concept. Defense sucks. Defense trash. Okay, fire the DC, get somebody else in here. So I will say I feel like OC and DC, again, like I said, it is a promotion thing where they people lose their guys all the time because promotion is successful. But it's also a position that is very easy to, the turnover rate is very high on offense coordinator and defense coordinator. So the fact that Lou is still our defense coordinator since 2019 means that, one, he's good, right? It means he's good, and we haven't had to move on from him. And number two, it means that, yeah, he's only gotten one cop coach opportunity. <laughs> but at the same time, though, he has. He has gotten the head coaching opportunity. GM, uh, we still sit here with our boy Duke Tobin. Uh, which I wouldn't want anyone else. 2002, which you go down the list here, and 2012, the Rams. Um, yeah, that's hilarious. 2010, the Steelers. Easily, 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 easily. Oh, Jerry Jones. Okay, no, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. I'm not, no, no, no. Because Jerry owns that team, and Jerry also likes to be everything on that team. I'm not counting Jerry Jones as the GM. That's bullcrap. He is the GM, but he's also technically the head coach because Mike McCarthy's a puppet for him to get to do whatever he wants. So, no, that's bullcrap. Jerry Jones is like a dictator in his own little world over there. So, no, I don't consider that 1889. But um, we have the longest tender GM. And the funny thing is, is, you know, Duke Tobin isn't really even our GM. He's more just our player of person, um, player, assistant of player personnel. Director of player personnel. And that's what he really is. And you might say, well, that's pretty much the GM. In hindsight, it is. And he acts as it as the number one GM. But reality-wise, it's kind of a group. We have Katie Blackburn. We have Zach Taylor. We have Duke Tobin. We have everyone who comes together and make a, makes a you know decision together. It's not like a dictatorship. It's more like a mutual democracy. So with that being said, though, it's just kind of funny. But guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys next one. Peace out.